हेलो फ्रेंड्स वंस अगेन आई वेलकम यू टू अवर जर्नी ऑफ सिक्स सिग्मा एंड लेट अस मूव वन स्टेप फर्दर विद द टॉपिक ऑन फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ टोटल क्वालिटी मैनेजमेंट दिस इज लेक्चर एट ऑफ दिस सिक्स सिग्मा कोर्स सीरीज एंड वी विल डिस्कस सम ऑफ द सैलियंट फीचर्स ऑफ टोटल क्वालिटी मैनेजमेंट बिफोर वी मूव ऑन टू द Uh, crux and uh, the content of this particular lecture let us have a small recap in the last lecture we have seen what is learning organization and there are certain prerequisites of the learning organization if your organization is struggling on many day to day issues then it is difficult for it to opt for any kind of continuous improvement program we have also seen the importance of kaizen small small improvements tqm versus iso and tqm and customer focus so already the concept of tqm we have uh, introduced in the last lecture now this lecture will take you further and appreciate the various philosophies advocated by various quality gurus on total quality management so this lecture we will basically focus on fundamentals of tqm common messages from quality gurus damings chain reaction quality enablers seven basic tools of quality by ishikawa and leadership issues so this uh, will help you to create a solid foundation in the organization for implementing six sigma and not only implementing but also realizing the excellent benefits in terms of money value of the six sigma implementation so tqm concept it is a comprehensive organization wide effort to improve the quality of products and services applicable to all organizations so here i would make a point that tqm is not specific to only manufacturing or service organization it can be applied to all sorts of organizations manufacturing service large scale small scale medium scale all sorts of product variety and these concepts are effective in bringing the right spirit and culture for quality in the organization so let us see the contributions of quality gurus and uh, what uh, basically they reflect upon the concept of quality so there are some common messages i will go through in detail the various uh, points important dimensions they have highlighted but there are some common message from quality gurus number 1 there are no shortcuts to quality prescribed procedure to be followed so you must believe in your sop you must believe in your quality document vision mission and the objectives and you cannot just adopt a shortcut to realize the sustainable quality in your organization no quick fixes it takes time to establish quality repeatedly i am emphasizing that your process might be at 3 sigma and you can set a realistic goal 4.5 sigma then subsequently once you reach to that milestone you can further improve it and set a new milestone let us say 5 sigma or 5.5 sigma so it takes time to establish quality and if an organization people they practice passion and patience in achieving this standard then they can realize the sustainable benefits of the quality improvement requires full commitment and support from top so we always say that when you look at the bottle always you will find the bottleneck at the top so in management in organization also we say that executive sponsorship their support for all sorts of initiatives in terms of continuous improvement is extremely important and they must support this kind of initiatives throughout the organizations which can enhance the moral and motivation of the people so the, that is the support then extensive training needed you cannot escape from the training requirement people they need to imbibe the different competencies different skills at different point in time and organization must have 
a charter to build the gradual competence of the people depending upon the various processes and the challenges organization is facing. And finally, participation of all employee is must. So, quality is not only the responsibility of quality department or few people, we have to have the commitment of all the people. The moment your product or service is passing from one stage to another stage, ownership is transferred, but if you think little bit critically, then with the ownership good or bad quality is also transferred. So, participation all of all employee is must and they must realize that the final product or service whatever we are delivering to the customer or we are giving to market it is because of all the people and functions in the organization. Let us see some key contributions of the quality gurus and what basically they have emphasized. So, Deming he heavily emphasized on process orientation and control of process for having better variability reduction and that is why use of statistics is recommended. He was the great advocate of drive out fear. So, Deming believed that people living under fear, suspicion every day say may be a fear of losing job or fear of getting a memo from the top management, they cannot really show their passion and commitment for the quality. So, drive out fear, let us have an open minded culture where people feel extremely motivated to participate in quality initiatives and reduction of variation. Juran if we see, then he mainly emphasized on management involvement. So, Juran uh, was a believer that top management must execute their sponsorship and they must provide all sorts of support whether in terms of technology, training or recruitment of the right people for the right function and uh, this can really boost the moral of the people in the organization. He proposed quality planning, control and improvement as a trilogy for establishing, maintaining and achieving the various quality standards. So, that we will see. Figenbaum, another uh, quality guru and he emphasized on total quality system. So, he used to say that whether it is maintenance, production, sales, marketing, this function should be seen as a system in totality and then you can really say achieve the desired quality standard and the customer satisfaction design quality in. So, quality is to be designed right at the concept stage as we have seen in the last lecture uh, say subsequently as you move further and further from your concept stage cost of building quality increases and then there is a customer orientation which is a common part in all the TQM philosophy. Ishikawa has again emphasized the use of statistics quality circle. Ishikawa says that you have quality circles operating may be including 10 to 12 people of different cadre, let them come together, discuss the problem on a time to time basis and figure out some amicable solution. So, that will ensure the involvement of the people as well as it will empower them, motivate them for proposing the new solutions to the existing quality problems. Crosby uh, he emphasized that uh, zero defects. So, he advocated that let us achieve a quality which is close to zero defect and cost of quality is one of the important factor in achieving this kind of standard. So, if you measure quality in terms of cost, dollar value, rupee value, then you can really sensitize the management as well as people for opting the higher and higher quality standards sigma level in our language and uh, that is where the real crux of zero defect lies. He emphasized on hidden factory, we have seen in detail in the previous lecture that hidden factory is the concept which basically say does not uncover the amount of effort or resources employed, extra resources employed in meeting the customer requirement. 
This is mainly because of rework and uh, scrap you are producing and this hidden factory must be exposed in order to improve upon your roll through pool yield as well as achieving the standard like zero defects. Slogans, he says that many a times slogans if they are not appropriately used then these slogans they create some kind of demotivation and to the extent possible such kind of slogans should be avoided. So, let us see uh, one by one some of the key contributions and philosophies. Dr. W. Edwards Deming, so he was one of the world's leader quality management and for his ideas on continuous improvement 1900 to 1993 a long period he has served as an academician, consultant and provided his uh, say professional services to many topmost organizations and uh, this is where Edward Deming say contributed a lot and created a great impact on American and Japanese industries. So, quality is made in the boardroom he strongly believed. However, limitations on quality are also made in boardroom. So, just see that uh, Deming advocates that the failure and success is decided in the boardroom and the moment you decide the policy, you decide the quality ideology, the time uh, that decides the success or failure of your quality initiative. So, damning on management, let us see what uh, philosophy he extends. I would just like to say that majority of the quality gurus, their principles are quite generic and many a times they are at appreciated as general management principles, but when they applied for the quality improvement, then the drastic improvement and results are realized by various organizations. So, defects are not free, somebody makes them and gets paid to make them. So, please see that again there is an emphasis on hidden factory deploying extra resources and that is where say defects needs to be controlled. Hopes without a method to achieve them will remain mere hope. So, you need to have a systematic methodology, use of statistic, use of scientific tools and techniques in order to dig out the cause root, cause uh, say problem and then subsequently address this root cause with a systematic methodology. Management needs training to learn about their company. So, the training part cannot be ignored and continuously you need to improve upon the competency to uh, learn about their company and the new practices. The job of management is not supervision but leadership. We will see uh, some dimensions of the leadership subsequently, but this is very important that you as a top management cannot just act as an inspector, you must impart necessary directives, policies, whatever technological support, infrastructural support as well as the motivation to the people through good HR policies and that is where the role of company organization is more than a supervision which is a leadership. The question is not where, whether a company is successful or not, but why. So, uh, repeatedly we are saying that DMAC approach has benefited many many organizations across the world and that is where the secret of success lies. So, it is not important just to say that some company is good or excellent, but we need to dig out that what is the reason why this company has achieved such a standard and that reason can be replicated or it can be adapted for achieving the quality standards. Problems are different but principles that will help to solve them are universal. So, this is very important. Deming says that the philosophies advocated as a part of total quality management, they form a bigger gamut and whether it is a manufacturing service or any scale of organization, the principles are universal and they can be adapted for a greater benefit to the company. Now, if you see one of the important contribution of Deming then Deming has uh, advocated something called Deming's chain reaction and how it operates let us see. 
So, improve quality is my objective, is my desire. Then cost decreases because of less rework, fewer mistake, fewer delays, snags, better use of machine time and material. This results in we have already seen roll through pool yield, your improve, uh, productivity improvement and subsequently captures the market with better quality and lower price. So, you are offering better quality but at the lower price. So, your competitiveness compared to the other players in the market improves. Then you stay in the business means it gives you sustainability and subsequently this leads to better job opportunity, better employment quality and further it improves the quality. So, if you see the spiral then this spiral keeps on repeating and the organization which believes in such say amplifying uh, getting amplifying advantage cycle then they will always move from one sigma level to higher sigma level. It means they will always show their passion, spirit and motivation for achieving better and better quality standards. So, Deming has basically advocated 14 points in order to create the quality culture in the organization and hence to see the success of continuous improvement initiatives such as Six Sigma. So, we will see couple of points. So, number one create a statement of the aims and purposes of the company or other organization and publish to all employees. So, he says that we should have some aims, purposes, vision and mission statement and let people to realize. For example, IIT Khadakpur they say dedicated to the service of nation. Everybody can understand what is expected from them. Caterpillar when they were very new and uh, say uh, subsequently the another earth moving equipment company Komatsu came in picture. Caterpillar had already established their uh, say world best in class quality and standards. Komatsu they said fine we want to have a very simple vision statement encircle caterpillar. So, caterpillar is the benchmark let them let us encircle them in all the way in terms of practices, in terms of culture, in terms of quality standard, in terms of product features and variety and this organization had seen a phenomenal improvement in their growth as well as quality standards. Second learn the new philosophy top management and everybody. So, we need to have an organization continually striving for learning, adapting new practices for improving the quality. Third, understand the purpose of inspection for improvement of processes and reduction of cost. So, inspection is totally a wasteful activity, but we must appreciate the necessary adequate inspection just to see that we can reduce the cost by reducing the defect and the practice of avoiding business on the basis of price tag only. This is very important and you cannot just say award or re reward your business in terms of price tag alone you must ensure the sustainable quality. So, uh, fifth point in the list is improve the system of production and service constantly and forever. So, it is a continuous improvement say advise, institute training and build the competency, teach and institute leadership. So, Deming says that let the leadership be realized at all the points in the organization. Let people to take the command, take the leadership of quality and this should percolate right from the top to bottom and this is where the culture of leadership is created. Eighth point already I emphasize drive out fear, create trust, empowerment, transparency and climate of innovation. Ninth optimize the efforts of team, groups, staff areas towards the aims and purposes of the company. So, let people come together, let them work in team and they should feel motivated to achieve a common goal which is in the benefit of the organization. Tenth is eliminate exhaustion for uh, exhortation for the workforce. So, this is 
Another important part that really hampers the motivation and moral for the workforce and we must see that such kind of exhortations for the workforce can be minimized. The point 11 is divided into two part 11A and 11B. So, 11A eliminate numerical codes for production instead learn and institute methods for improvement. So, do not say he say he believes Deming believes do not say 20 percent improvement in productivity 30 percent, but instead you try to learn and institute or implement the methods which can help you to realize even better standards. 11b eliminate MBO that is management by objectives instead learn the capabilities of processes and how to improve. So, point number 11 emphasizes on same uh, spirit that instead of having number instead of having very stringent objectives it is better to emphasize on the learning of new methods and implementing them to strive for the better results. Point number 12 remove barriers that rope people of pride of workmanship. Many a times we have seen typically that people working at different level they do not derive the equal pride in executing their work. And there are certain barriers, maybe bureaucratic barrier, too much administrative procedure, lack of empowerment. So, Deming strongly advocates that remove such kind of barriers that rob the people from taking pride from their work. Number 13, encourage education and self improvement for everyone. So, people can be trained, that is one part, but another thing that encourage education and let people to feel motivated in self learning and improving their own functional processes. And finally, take action to accomplish the transformation. So, when you are looking for continuous improvement, you have to bring the transformation change as a part of your culture and this is the 14th point that take action to bring transformation. So, typically the PDCA cycle plan do study or check and act was advocated by Deming and it, it was very much in use, but I, I emphasize that later on organizations realize that DMEC is a better cycle because it also accommodates the improvement and sustainability of the improvement and that is how this cycle has little bit lost the importance and PDCA uh, uh, instead of PDCA organizations they are more following DMEC or DMA DV approach. So, there were implications and Deming's theory of profound knowledge, he makes the point that true learning never takes place unless we place our credibility on the line, unless we become a real part of learning experience. So, for example, you are attending this course and I am talking about lot of concepts, but unless you put couple of concepts in practice or you visit the industry and try to appreciate the relevance of these concepts, you can really never realize or internalize the importance of these concepts and it remains superficial. So, you may execute a project, you may visit an industry and that helps you to build your profound knowledge, internalize knowledge and that is something Deming emphasizes. That is to find a concept is true or if an idea works, we must act as though it works and follow through and learn from both success and failure of that action. So, this is where the theory of profound knowledge, internalization of knowledge comes in picture. If you see the contribution of another great quality guru, he is Joseph Juran and typically he proposed quality trilogy quality planning, quality control and quality improvement. So, briefly if we see the three phases quality planning, quality control and quality improvement, then as a part of quality planning, he advocates that sets the quality goal, let you have the quality policy, customer requirements must be identified and analyzed and must be translated into our language. So, customer has their own language, we follow some language that is more technical in nature and you need to develop the products for these needs only. So, 
you cannot develop a product and force the customer that fine i have built an excellent product and you must accept it we must try to say get the voice of the customer in their language and convert it into our language and then you optimize the product features for these needs quality control prove the process uh, can produce under operating condition transfer process to operation and this is where you establish the stringent control over variability and finally quality improvement seek to optimize the process via tool of diagnosis so it is not important that you control the process we will see couple of tools and techniques later on but you also need to optimize the parameters of your process and see that quality improvement really takes place at its best so three errors basically joseph juran advocated that inadvertent error in achieving the quality so this is unintentional my operator has no intention unpredictable errors occurring randomly an operator is unaware of any such kind of error technique error here lack of knowledge of an essential new technique unintentional specific and unique to certain defect types unavoidable and consistent so this error are mainly because of lack of knowledge or i am not adapting the new method and this can only be rectified if you improve upon training or awareness to new methodology third error which is dangerous which is willful error so in first two cases operator is unintentional person is unintentional in the third one he makes the error willfully and this is intentionally and it is persistently so now there are some remedies to counter the willful error number one is depersonalize the order so one should not give orders to another both should take the orders from the situation so there is a demand and let me follow in a team this particular situation and the solution and let the order giving process be stopped reassign the work so separate critical work from the rest so that selective assignment becomes feasible so many times people they feel more uh, say difficult to handle so you can separate out and then people can say handle a particular component well establish accountability and traceability so let people not just pass their inefficiency to the next stage let them be feel more confident in taking up the accountability and traceability conduct periodic quality audits to sensitize the people quality uh, communication to improve the quality and motivate the people so that they can always aspire for achieving better standard in their process or function then koro ishikawa and his philosophy so he has many contributions to quality and the most noteworthy being his total quality viewpoint so company wide quality control basically emphasizes on human side of quality and he proposed ishikawa diagram and the assembly and the use of seven basic tools for quality improvement so briefly let us see later on we will see with the example also so pareto analysis what are the big problems how can we separate them out cause and effect diagram so what is the real root cause of the problem stratification how is the data made up so what is the overall variability and what is the overall composition of my data so that is stratification check sets how often it occurs or it is done histogram what do overall variation looks like so what is my uh, most likely distribution how the data is distributed scattered charts what are the relationship between factors productivity and maybe let us say implementation of new technology i want to figure out so you can use this scatter chart process control chart i must set a system by which i can keep my process under control and we will have a detailed discussion on process control chart so typically total quality management is about customer identified quality involvement of the people and their empowerment use of sqc shared problem solving leadership and team management so this is uh, the overall domain of total quality management 
that it is management by fact. Second, process management, focus on process, the result will definitely be in terms of product or service be better. Concern for employee, action not just words and result focus. So, drive out the fear, these are some of the well known features of TQM. So, total involvement of all, continuous forever sustainable and improvement elimination of waste, reduction in variability and innovation, this is all putting together becomes total quality improvement or total quality management. So, this is just a summary of TQM principles and you can see that the McKinsey, a well known uh, say consulting firm, they proposed a TQM model and the broader dimensions of this design process, process quality and overall company quality in terms of policies, culture, administrative procedures and this basically is reflected in product quality, process capability, service quality and logistics quality. So, there are various quality enablers as we have seen, appropriately instituted awards, reward system, benchmarking, customer survey, effective leadership, just in time, housekeeping, 5S as a part of lean, quality circle, audits, quality function deployment and commitment of the top management. So, quality improvement and roles of employees, it is very much important to emphasize that without having the total commitment of the people, I cannot achieve the quality across the organization. So, there has to be participative problem solving, that should be a leadership and leadership must be influential in terms of the purpose, in terms of the objectives. So, you can just see that there is a difference in leadership and management. Leadership is all about creating vision, installing new practices, developing a culture of creativity and fearlessness and this is something different than management. Management mainly focuses on stability, administrative procedures, problem solving within the structure and so on. So, we need to focus more on the leadership, development of the leadership at various points in the organization. So, there is a well known say Harse Blankard situational leadership theory and you can see that on x axis there is a directive behavior, y axis there is a supportive behavior. So, a leader cannot apply just SOP in dealing with the people, may be subordinate or peer and establish a culture of leadership. So, many a times people they are finding it difficult to execute the task and they may need more kind of directive behavior or they might be feeling low in terms of their motivation. So, they might be needing supporting behavior. So, let us just see that directing means hand holding, follower is unable and unwilling or insecure. Coaching is influence, follower is unable but willing to do the job. So, he, he is lacking some competence but he is willing to do the job. Supporting is participative follower is able, but unwilling or lack of confidence and delegating fantastic your follower or subordinate or peer is comfortable in executing the task as well as willing and this is where you must try to bring all the people over a period of time where they enter into self learning, they enter into self motivation and without much observation they execute the task. So, leadership is about three dimensions passionate, inspirational and ethical which can really impress the people and build the culture. So, communicate is one of the important leadership skill, empathy and understanding others, listening them, constant learning and visualization, ability to re see, realize and convey the results of the process. Now, before we end, I would just like to put you under little bit thinking process and uh, just try to reflect upon these questions and you would be able to appreciate the concepts taught in this lecture. So, what are the key contributions of quality gurus? How it helps the organization to improve their manufacturing and service sustainability? What are the key pillars of TQM? How do you appreciate the importance of each one? 
will there be a difference in implementing TQM in manufacturing and service organization and if yes what would be the differences and finally what is the role of leader in implementing TQM successfully in the organization these are the references you can uh, say refer for uh, say deeper learning of the taught concepts logothetis is one of the very good book on TQM you can also refer Forrester uh, implementing Six Sigma and some other books on green uh, belt and black, uh, black belt uh, Six Sigma. So, the conclusion in order to effectively implement quality people must understand what quality is and how it benefits everyone. It is leadership's responsibility to lay the foundation and support a quality culture within an organization or program and finally, a quality management program is essential for the implementation of successful quality assurance and the application of quality controls. So, with this I thank you very much for your interest in learning the concepts of TQM. Please revise it, internalize it, if possible visit a nearby industry and try to see the application of such principles. We will meet again in the next lecture with a new topic. Thank you very much. Be with me.